under the weather. So you get like, <laughs> you get this version of Brit. I tried to make myself look a little cute for camera, but I also have my dogs here on my lap because they're like stage five clingers right now. And I'm just making it work. And one of the reasons, one of the heartbeats behind this YouTube and behind this entire midweek motivation series was really, I wanted you to feel like you were on journey with me, that I took you in real time through things that I was navigating, through things that I am navigating and just helping you move with me through any areas where you feel like you can relate. So today's a topic that when I pulled my audience on Instagram, when I was getting ready to start this whole like thing, right? One of the first places I went is I was like, let me go to my Instagram followers and let me do a little poll to see what content you guys truly wanted and needed in this season. And one of the repeating themes that kept coming up was somewhere along the lines of Brit how do I get unstuck? Whether it was like, you know, I'm in a slump, I'm not feeling motivated, I feel stuck, I'm in a rut, like anything of that sort. And for me, I was like, I wrote that one down on a sticky note and underlined it like 17 times because I get this. I vibe with this topic because I've often felt stuck myself. Being stuck can look different. Um, it could be a morning where you just can't find the motivation to do much of anything. And it could be an entire season where things just feel off or out of alignment and you don't really know which way to go. And I've been in both sorts of seasons. In fact, real time, real truth. This morning, I was in such a stuck mess in such a stuck rut. So I feel like this is super relevant. And I'm literally speaking to you from the trenches of things that I do when I feel stuck. And also in this season where I've been navigating, jumping into a new space and a new business and just exploring all the new things that I aspire to do, I've also felt very stuck in my pursuit. So I'm really excited because in today's topic, in today's midweek motivation, I really feel like we'll be able to tackle both. So before we get into how to get unstuck, I want to talk through some common places where we tend to get stuck because I think if we can first pinpoint exactly what is holding us back, that's going to be the key indicator of like, where we start with our action, if that makes sense. So number one is self-doubt. And it's common, you guys, to doubt ourselves when we're going after something we've never done before. The proof of like the will this work out the way I envision isn't really there, especially if it's a new season you're navigating and you've never done that before. And I get that. But just know that each new level that you get to is going to bring that familiar feeling of doubt. So you have to learn how to ride the wave of it versus allowing it to stop you. Because for me, doubt is always a clue that I'm trying something big and something new. And that, my friends, is a win in and of itself. So if you feel a little doubt about where you're going, like, I don't know, do you, do, can I really make this happen? That's a clue that you're on the right path because you wouldn't even be asking that question if you weren't trying something big or new. Second place is perfectionism. Woo! So spoiler, the stars never align. Perfect is a myth, right? Nothing is ever going to be perfect. And so if you're waiting for that, your perfect ideas or your perfect plans, they are going to die while you watch other people take imperfection, imperfect, messy action. There's this famous study from a professor at the University of Florida that I found fascinating. I've read about it in a couple different books, um, but the gist is this. On the first day of his photography class, he divided the students into two groups. So on one side was the quality group, and on the other side was the quantity group. The quantity group would be graded solely on the amount of work that they produced. So on the final day of class, he'd tally the number of photos submitted. 100 photos would rate an A, 90 photos a B, 80 photos a C, and then so on and so forth. So just quantity only. The quality group would be graded solely on the excellence of their work. They would only need to produce one photo during that semester, but in order to get an A, it had to be nearly perfect. So at the end of the term, he was surprised to find out that all of the best photos were actually produced by the quantity group because during the semester, it was those students, they were just busy taking action. They were taking photos, experimenting with like composition and lighting and testing out different methods in the dark room and learning my friends, from their mistakes. And it was in that process of just creating hundreds of photos, just like doing the dang thing, 
that they honed in on their skills. And then meanwhile, this quality group was so caught up in the fact that that one image had to be perfect that they sat around speculating about perfection and ended up actually with one mediocre photo at the very end. So perfectionism, you guys, it's this myth and it keeps us, keeps us trapped time and time again. And what I'm going to nudge you towards is that if you feel like, oh, you know what? Perfectionism is what's been keeping me stuck. The more reason to take action and bust out the reps. Number three, when it comes to spaces that we're stuck is comparison. <laughs> and I get this one. I get this one deep in my heart because it's a slippery slope. I could easily be comparing myself to somebody on social that I admire and I'm like highly inspired by, but maybe that inspo and admiration starts to turn into comparison. And when I start to get into a place where I don't feel like I measure up to what they're doing, I know it's not healthy anymore. So it's really easy to take one scroll on social and like feel like your imperfect life isn't measuring up to that one perfect post that, you know, someone else seems to have. And for me, comparison gets me stuck time and time again. So one thing that helps me is remembering that everyone has struggles. Even that person that I'm watching that seems like they have it figured out and like they've got it all together. Behind the scenes, they are struggling. Behind the scenes, I know they've had a bad day at some point. Behind the scenes, I know that they probably get stuck from time to time. And I have to remember that. And chances are, I remind myself that if this person is at a high level of success, chances are their struggles are also higher than my struggles, right? Like I realize when you get to higher levels, that comes with more weight. And so sometimes do I have to ask myself, like, do I want to trade struggles? You know, that person that has a million likes on their photos, they're also probably struggling with the fact that they have some haters in their inbox and some haters in their comment section. And so maybe you don't have the amount of likes that so-and-so has on their social media, but do you have the amount of haters that they have that come along with that territory? And that kind of brings me back down and grounds me too. I also like to remember that comparison leaves clues. So if I find myself comparing, you know, find myself in that comparison trap where I'm looking at somebody else on social and I'm really admiring their life or what they're doing, I have to stop and really look at what I am admiring and what I'm inspired by. Because when I know that, when I know what that is, that can help me get unstuck by taking action towards it. So if I'm admiring somebody because they're so consistent with their daily workouts, instead of being jealous and like jaded <laughs> that, uh -huh, you know, here she is working out again. I wish I had time or I wish I could be disciplined like her. I wish I was motivated. Instead of wishing and just watching, I get to work. I can say, oh, I admire her consistency. I admire how healthy she seems because of this practice she has. So I'm going to start implementing some of the things that I admire about that person. Number four is waiting for the perfect time. So just like perfectionism is going to keep you waiting, timing is the same. I once heard that the perfect time to start something is the first time you think of it. And that's helpful for me because I could easily sit and stew over like pros and cons without ever taking a leap. In fact, that was kind of my story. If you know a little bit of my backstory of like how I got into this space now and doing what I'm doing, I really was in, in my previous business kind of feeling stuck. And I had this feeling like I was supposed to move into a new space and be kind of like doing a new thing. And I wasted so much time and I won't call it wasting because I don't think, you know, nothing is wasted to me, but I feel like the first time I thought of it, I really should have started like my exit strategy and like my strategy for entering this space versus just like trying to push that voice down that was inside of me telling me like, come on, Britt, take the leap. I like stifled that voice and pushed it down for so long because I was kind of like waiting for the perfect timing. And then I realized towards the end of 2022, there will be no perfect time. I will always have another reason why I'm like, ah, you know, like maybe I should wait till March. Oh, maybe I should wait till the summer. Maybe I should wait till the new year. And I'll always, always find those times to convince myself to wait. So if that's you, if that's you today, I realize that when something has been on my mind and it's on my mind, like on repeat, like one of those things that you like literally can't push down anymore, that's the clue that it's time to start moving towards that. And the last one, number five is waiting for permission. 
I watch a lot of women stop themselves because they feel this need to have permission. In fact, in my last business, I granted permission to women all the time. It was like a daily basis that I was granting women permission to go after building a business that they loved and going after their freaking dreams. And I know like the voice sometimes that's on repeat is kind of like this, like, who am I to start that Etsy shop? Or who am I to post inspiring stuff on social? Or who am I to... I don't know, fill in the blank. But those who am I's are one of the reasons we get stuck. What I know about you is that the world needs you. And that if that idea or dream or vision was placed on your heart, it's for you. So you got to start. Take some messy action and give yourself the permission slip that you have what it takes to figure it all out. And if today you're waiting for a permission slip, permission freaking granted. Okay, quick disclaimer before I get into exactly how to get unstuck, because I know we like like a tangible real life example that we can like walk away from this episode and implement. Before I say that though, I got to talk to the ladies in the room who are like, okay, I'm just not feeling motivated, Britt. (laughs) I get it. You're like sitting here already. You're nodding your head. You're like, yep, that's why I'm stuck. It's the comparison trap or it's perfectionism or I've been waiting for the perfect time. And you know why you're stuck. That's perfect because you've already done a little of the prep work. But acknowledging what's holding you back doesn't stop. Like it it can't stop there. One of the things we often wait for after we've acknowledged like, okay, comparison's holding me back or I've been held back in this trap of, you know, self-doubt. But then we wait for this sweep of motivation to come in and save us. Now, well, I swear once I'm motivated, then I'll get unstuck. I know why I'm stuck, but now I got to get motivated to get unstuck. So you like buy all the planners, you buy all the journals, you go like buy the new workout outfit. You like wait for the permission of motivation to come in. But friends, we don't need a new year, a new outfit, (laughs) a new planner, or even a new week to get unstuck and motivated. I'm going to put that in quotes, motivated. What we simply need is action. Action comes before motivation. Action comes before motivation. You have to do the thing and then you feel the motivation. And it's when we put in the reps of of the action that we start to generate this feeling of motivation that, that actually kind of is becoming discipline in a sense. And so when you don't feel like doing something, I have to remind myself of like what the benefit is on the other side. So for example, like working out is an easy one to talk about because you're like, ah, I don't feel like moving my body today. But I remind myself of what I'll feel like on the flip side, 30 minutes later, 45 minutes later, an hour later. How do I feel tomorrow when I did the thing today that I know will help me get unstuck? So stop thinking about the start of it and how you feel and start thinking about the after feeling. Like I said, I know we love a tangible example. So I want to give you three ways to get unstuck today. And I'm going to tell you, this is how my day actually started. I told you real time, I'm not feeling well. I was facing some disappointment from something that fell through that we were really excited about this weekend. And then I, and then I got sick and I, this morning was like, I don't want to do anything. I'm so stuck. I'm so stuck. And so this is literally what I did. Literally what I did. The first thing is I put on my sneakers and I decided to put on a podcast and go outside and go for a walk, get some fresh air, change up my environment and change up my state essentially. And that helps me. So number one, if you feel stuck, I want you to charge your environment. How can you like supercharge your environment so that your state changes? Because when we're stuck, it doesn't feel fun. But the journey to your goal ultimately should be enjoyable. Now, I know that there's times where like there's the ups and the downs of the journey and there's times where it just feels like blah, right? But in general, when you're pursuing a goal and it's aligning with your values, it should feel ultimately enjoyable. So if it's not, I'm just going to put in like a little side note. Maybe it's time to like rethink the goal and see if it still aligns with your values or is it a goal that like a past version of you has set before and you feel like you still need to do that or Is it a goal that maybe like people around you are setting, but it really isn't in alignment with you? So for me, when I'm simply stuck, feeling meh, but my goals are in alignment, I charge up my environment so that I get out of that blah state. So like I said, today for me, it was a podcast and a walk. Uh, It could be lighting a candle in my office and putting on some like pump up jams, right? Uh, I could turn, turn my morning like 
I don't have it here, but a lot of times my morning coffee is like sitting on my desk still by the afternoon and it's not warm anymore. <laughs> and so instead of, instead of um, going through this whole afternoon slump, I'll turn my like morning cold coffee into like a fresh iced coffee. And that way it's like kind of a fresh drink. It's almost like I went to the coffee shop and got myself something fun, but it's just ways that I hit reset on my mood because we want to be in a better state. If you are stuck, chances are your energy is like in a low state. So what can you do right now real quick to change your state, to get in a better state? Number two is to ditch the end goal and think of the next benchmark on the path. So the end goal for me oftentimes can feel like really freaking far away. So instead of thinking how far I am from like getting there, I'll ditch that for a second. Not forever. I'm not saying like totally ditch, abandon ship, ditch the goal. What I'm saying is for the moment, ditch that end goal and just consider what is the next thing that's in front of me that I can work towards. And I'll give you an example. So one of my recent goals at the top of this year was starting the sisterhood membership that I have. And that felt really freaking far away. So to start, instead of like worrying about the membership, I had to ask myself, what's like the first thing I need? And I knew that I needed a website. So I looked at that next benchmark on my path and I went ahead and I like researched, you know, okay, today I'm going to research websites. I'm going to pick the website server that I want. I'm going to look at different plans. I'm going to like, I'm going to research the website. Okay. Did that? Cool. Well, now in order to start a website, I need a template. So I started researching website templates so that I could build the website. Right. And I, once the template was done and the website was built and on the back end, like things were kind of in order to be able to even launch the membership. I was like, okay, well, once I launch it, there has to be content for them. There has to be a topic. So I figured out the theme for the spring and the sisterhood and I created the content for that. And then I was ready to start kind of like launching and talking about the membership. And that's just an example in my life, but relate this to your goal. Instead of looking at the big picture, I want you to like take a micro view in at what the next step is and break that down into bite-sized chunks. Okay, hey, number three, do one thing that gets you closer to that benchmark. So lastly, you're gonna take action. Because remember what I said, action before motivation. Dale Carnegie has an awesome quote. It says, inaction breeds doubt and fear. Action breeds confidence and courage. If you want to conquer fear, do not sit home and think about it. Go out and get busy. The unique spiral of being stuck is that the more we like sit in that inaction, the more we'll continue to just take no action. And the more we take small steps, the more we get inspired to just keep taking those steps and keep taking action. So I get it. Like the last thing you want to do when you're feeling blah is to take action. But the more you can just take a small step, it's going to snowball in your favor. So as hard as it is, go do one thing. One thing that's in the direction of your benchmark. Maybe your goal is fitness related. So instead of worrying about the end goal and worrying about how much weight you're trying to lose or what that looks like on your journey, maybe worry today about lacing up your shoes and getting outside. Every action, you guys, in the direction of your desires matters. And over time, it adds up. So for me, it's like, I just have to go do the dang thing. So number one, to get unstuck today, charge your environment so you can change your state, like get outside for a work, a walk or a motivating podcast, light that candle, put out the pop-up jams, turn that coffee into an iced coffee, like whatever you need to do, but hit reset for your mood because immediately you want to get out of that blah state. Number two, ditch the end goal. Think of the next right thing in front of you. And then number three, go do that thing. So I don't know what season of life you're specifically in or where you're feeling stuck, but I know that when you feel stuck, it's a vicious cycle that just kind of keeps you feeling more and more stuck. So whether it's doubting, you know, whether it's doubting you, you have what it takes, getting caught up in that perfection trap, maybe comparing yourself to others who are where you desire to go, or you're simply just waiting for that perfect time or per permission to be granted. I just want you to know that it's normal to have those days or go through those seasons. Like you guys, I'm here 10 years plus on my coaching journey. And the three steps that I'm giving you today are literally what I followed to help me get out of a little rut that I was in this morning. So it's normal. That's, that is the human experience to have these highs and these lows. And to me, it's an indicator that you have ideas and that you're trying. If you didn't have ideas and you weren't trying, you wouldn't feel stuck. We feel stuck because we're onto something. 
So I don't want you to be one of those women who gets stopped when you get stuck because you and those dreams that are on your heart are worth it to move through the stuck and into action. And I hope today gave you some tangible ways on how you can make that happen. You guys, I'm forever and always rooting for you. I hope this quick episode helped. Make sure that you let me know in the comments below uh, what stood out to you. What is something that was keeping you stuck? And what is the action that you're taking today? Share this with some friends, hit subscribe. And if you need more resources, you can absolutely check out the link below to snag some free trackers um, just to help you kind of you know, work towards those goals and what matters most to keep yourself accountable towards the things that are on your heart because the world needs those ideas that were laid on your heart. And so go ahead and click that link and snag all those. And if the sisterhood membership is something that you're interested in, keep your eyes peeled because later this month, I will be opening up enrollment for our summer 2023 session. I'll give all the info and details about what our theme is. I've got that prepping behind the scenes. I'm super excited about it. But if you are a hardworking, purpose-driven woman, with woman, woman, which I think you are if you are tuning in. Um, this is the community for you because it's where I'm going to remind you that your goals matter, that the work that you want to go out into the world matters, but it also matters that you take care of yourself in pursuit of those. So that's coming later this, this month too. Just keep your eyes peeled and I'll put the link below if you want to get on the wait list for that. And you guys, I hope that again, today's midweek motivation really helped you with some tangible ways. And I can't wait to chat same time, same place next week. Have a great week, you guys.